In the last video, I showed you how to compare means in SPSS. In this video, we're going to look at how to interpret the output. If we look at the first table in the output, Case Processing Summary, it tells us that of the 1,124 cases in the data set, nine could not be included in this analysis because of missing data in one or more of the variables. As you can see from the table, this is only 0.8% of the cases, so it's not a serious issue. The second table, at the bottom of the window, shows us the differences in means and standard deviations. If we look at the means first, we can see that there's very little difference between males and females. The mean satisfaction level for males is 7.23, and the mean for females is 7.12. We have to bear in mind that the scale only goes from 0 to 10, but even so this is a very small difference between the sexes. So looking at the mean alone doesn't provide strong evidence that men and women are very different in terms of their satisfaction with their physical health. But we also need to consider the dispersion of satisfaction in the two groups, or how spread out the scores are. We can compare the standard deviation of each group in order to get an idea of the difference in dispersion between males and females. As you can see, the standard deviation for males is about 2.15 points and for female is about 2.38. So we can conclude that because both the means and the standard deviations of both groups are very similar, there isn't a notable difference in the distribution of this kind of satisfaction between males and females. I'm now going to show you some other statistics you can produce to compare groups. We'll use the same example so you can see what extra information can be produced and decide how useful you think it could be in a variety of different circumstances. So go back to the Analyze menu, scroll down to Compare Means and select the Means option. Everything in the dialog box should be as you left it, with the same variables listed in the boxes on the right hand side. If you press the option button, you'll get another dialog box. This time, we're going to select some of the other statistics from the left hand column and ask SPSS to calculate these for us. So first, select the median and transfer it to the cell statistics box with the button in the middle. Do the same for minimum, maximum, and range. Press continue, and then press OK. You'll see that as well as producing the number of cases, the means, and the standard deviations for each group and for the data set overall, we also have the medians, minimum values, maximum values, and the ranges. The median satisfaction of physical health for the respondents overall is 8, and this is also the case for males and females as separate groups. The minimum and maximum values and the range are also identical for the two groups. This provides us with further evidence that, in relation to satisfaction with their physical health, men and women aren't really that different. We're now going to look at comparing means when the categorical variable has more than two categories. This time we'll look at a relationship where we might guess, before we do any analysis, that there might be a difference and that this difference might favour a particular group. We're going to look at the difference in satisfaction with personal relationships between respondents who are married or cohabiting, those who are single, and those who are widowed, divorced, or separated. Before we start the analysis, you might want to think about which group might be most satisfied with their personal relationships and which group might be least satisfied. You can write down your predictions and compare them with the results that we'll get later in this video. The first thing we need to do is to look at each of the variables separately to examine their distribution. You should know how to do this by now, or at least can check how to do this by watching one of the earlier videos. First, we'll produce a frequency count for the marital variable, just to check that none of the groups are very small. So go to Analyze, scroll down to Descriptive Statistics, and click on Frequencies. We need to find the marital status variable and transfer it over. 
But as you can see, we've still got some variables left over there from our previous analyses. So we'll reset first and start again from scratch. Select marital status and press the arrow. We'll then press OK. As you can see by looking at the frequency column, there are a reasonable number of respondents in each of the three groups. The smallest number is 243 in the single category, which shouldn't be a problem for our analysis. So now we'll do exactly the same analysis as we did for satisfaction with personal health, but we'll be doing it this time with satisfaction with personal relationships. So again, go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Frequencies. We'll reset, find the variable that we want, click on it, and transfer it over. Next, we'll click on Statistics, look at the Mean, Median, Mode, Standard Deviation, Minimum Values, and Maximum Values. Then press Continue, select Charts, Histogram, Show Normal Curve on Histogram. Then we can press Continue, and then OK. The first thing we'll notice is that the overall levels of satisfaction for this variable seem to be even higher than for physical health, with a median of 9 and a mode of 10. If we scroll down to look at the histogram, we can see that again the distribution is negatively skewed and definitely not normally distributed. So now let's compare the distribution of males and females in relation to this variable. We'll use all the measures we used last time so we can see the differences in measures other than the mean and the standard deviation. Scroll down to compare means and select means. Press the reset button so we can enter new variables. Select marital status, which will be our independent variable. And satisfaction with personal relationships, which will be our dependent variable. Then click on options. Select median, minimum values, maximum values. Press continue, and then OK. If we look at the minimum and maximum values, we can see that regardless of marital status, some respondents pick the highest and lowest scores for satisfaction. Looking across the table, we can also see that married or cohabiting respondents had a slightly higher median value of 9 compared to the other two groups that both had a median of 8. We should remember, however, that all these scores are high given that 10 was the maximum. The means and the standard deviations are slightly more interesting, however. We can see that the mean score for married or cohabiting respondents is considerably higher at nearly 8.9 compared to single respondents, whose mean score is 7.24, and widowed, divorced or separated respondents, whose mean score was 7.43. There are also differences in the standard deviations of the three groups. Not only is the mean for married and cohabiting respondents higher than the other two groups, but the standard deviation is also smaller than for single respondents and those who are widowed, divorced or separated. This means that the scores given by married or cohabiting respondents are clustered more closely around the mean of that group compared to the distribution of the cases around the means in the other two groups. To put it slightly differently, the mean for married or cohabiting respondents is more representative of the scores of respondents in that group than are the means for the other two groups. This analysis has therefore produced some reasonably strong evidence that married or cohabiting respondents are more satisfied with their personal relationships compared to both single respondents and those who are widowed, divorced or separated. You might have guessed that this would have been the case before we conducted the analysis. But what about the difference between single respondents and those who are widowed, divorced and separated? On the face of it, there is very little difference between them. Their medians are identical and their means are very similar. There is also very little difference between their standard deviations. 
We can conclude from this, then, that although married or cohabiting respondents are more satisfied with their personal relationships compared to the other two groups, there isn't really much difference in this respect between single respondents and those who are widowed, divorced or separated. In the last two videos, we've covered analysing the relationship between one continuous variable and one categorical variable. In the next video, we'll look at conducting analyses with two continuous variables.